This instructional companion on the sim uh, simple hoist falls under the major topic Dynamics and Vibrations, which contains the following five chapters. Properties of solid bodies, kinematics, kinetics, which is where this uh, instructional companion will come from, mechanisms and power transmission systems, and vibrating systems. The chapter on kinetics covers the many topics shown, and in particular, we're going to be looking, of course, applying the uh, Newton's laws of motion, F equals MA. We'll be talking about motion of rigid bodies, uh, rotation of, a, of the actual hoist itself, and then what is referred to as uh, linear to rotational motion, the rotation of the hoist uh, moving the weight. So we'll be talking about those. So what do I consider a simple hoist? Well, what we have here is a rotating winch here, which we are going to look for the applied torque. I call that C for couple, uh, because we're going to be using T for tension in the cable. Uh, too many T's in the problem if we didn't uh, change uh, to C, and it is a couple. And the question would be is determine that torque that's required in foot-pounds if, uh, if you're in the U.S. system, Newton meters if you're in the SI. But in this one, uh, to accelerate block B, this weight, uh, at 4 feet per second squared from rest, or some specified value. And I picked 4 for a reason, as you're going to see. Uh, you would be given the weight of A, the uh, moment of inertia about uh, the axle uh, at A, which might include the motor armature and gears and other kinds of things, the radius of the actual pulley of the hoist uh, winch, and the weight, obviously, of the block. So all of that would be given. But before we work that, I want to work um, the problem in which you have the same hoist, uh, except you release it and let it drop, and that's the actually the MERM example uh, that I want to, um, to work on. Uh, it uses the concept of uh, dynamic e equilibrium, which I have, uh, as Rumsfeld would say, I have a minimum of high regard. I've also already uh, indicated that that is not, uh, not the way I recommend, or Dr. Tom recommends that you approach, so how would we? So what does that problem look like? Okay, the MERM example is the same system, except we are going to say if the system is released from rest, determine the initial angular acceleration of the pulley A, uh, the linear acceleration of block B, which is related, and though he doesn't find it, uh, ought to find the tension uh, T in the cable, and you'd have the exact same things given, the weight of the pulley, though you don't really need it for the find the um, kinematics of it, the, uh, of course, the I about A, the R, and the WB. Okay, so let's work that problem first. And of course, the first thing to do is to draw free body diagrams. And in dynamics, you always separate the systems. You never leave them together. So let's look at a free body of pulley A and the free body of block B and, uh, and apply uh, Newton's laws of motion. So we'll do that on the next page. Okay, separating these again, this is the MERM example, release from rest. Uh, we've got the axle forces AX and AY. We've got the weight uh, A. We're going to show, of course, uh, when you release, this should certainly uh, rotate clockwise. And so alpha sub A would be that direction, the initial. Of course, the in initial angular uh, acceleration is zero, just like the initial velocity is zero, releasing it from rest. I'm going to use this coordinate system, x, y, and clockwise for, for that one. But for this one down here, again, for each body, you can have whatever you want. And I'm going to, to keep from having a built-in negative. I am going to let positive be down so that we don't um, uh, have, have a negative built in here uh, to deal with, um, with it. Okay. So what we have is uh, two bodies, so let's just apply uh, the equations of motion. We've got really a three equations to apply to the pulley, and we've got one to the block. So let me do the, uh, the uh, pulley first, and since uh, point A is fixed, some of the forces is going to be zero both in X and Y, but uh, some of the moments isn't. So let's write those out. Okay, again, since A is fixed, some of the forces in X, we just got AX. Some of the forces in Y, we have AY up, uh, WA and T down. So really the axle force there, A sub Y, is uh, some of the weight and the tension. And we would use that to design the, uh, the axle, the bearings, and things like that. We don't need it for here, but we certainly write them down, equations 1 and 2. But now we're going to take moments. And uh, remember, our choices are either the center of gravity or fixed point. Well, we're in luck here because point A fits both of those. So let's do that moment with clockwise positive. So again, A is either the, is this actually both CG and fixed. 
So if we put our finger there, the only uh, moment that we have really is our R. Put that in here. R times T is clockwise, and that equals I A times alpha. So there's our equation number three. Okay. So what we've got left now is the block. Let's do that. Okay, again, summing forces downward. We've got, of course, I show, of course, WB at the center of the block. T is, sorry, I missed the T there. Um, Newton's third law. So we've got the equations of motion. Got them all here. And so WB's down minus T equals uh, MA, MB, A sub B. Well, we've given uh, the weight of the block, so this is the U.S. system. So that's WB over G times uh, the acceleration of B. So that's equation number four. And uh, so equation number two up there is just to give us AY, AX is zero. So we essentially have um, equations three and four in uh, three unknowns, a, uh, alpha, A, T, and AB. So we need another equation. Let me write that down, though. So we need a, a third equation, and what, what ha happens is when you do the equilibrium first, it tells you what you need. You need some kind of relationship between alpha and a sub b. Well, uh, we've really got motion in a circle, so uh, a point on the rim of, uh, of the pulley is going to have an acceleration of r alpha, and that's got to match a sub b, or the cable is going to break or, or buckle. So there's our third equation, and let's write that down. Okay, again, that's why... Um, don't try to do the kinematics first. Wait until you find out what you need. You can write down kinematics so the cows come home, but in this case, we know exactly what we need. So there's our fifth equation. So now uh, we can gather essentially three, four, and five. One and two are already taken care of. So let's do uh, do that on the next page. We're going to still solve this using the number of uh, the uh, a sub b and stuff, and put the numbers in from the example later. What I want you to have though is a set of uh, general answers that you can work any problem. Okay, uh, again, what I'm doing here is just to give you warm fuzzies about the answers that you will just use uh, in a couple of pages here. So I'm just going to show you how that is. It's just not uh, this arm waving. So the key to, typically is that you solve for T in 3 and 4, equate those, and then use the kinematics to either do, have a single equation in alpha A or AB. In this case, I'm going to have AB. So let's do that. Let's uh, do that sort of uh, substitution or rearranging. Okay, so from three I've solved for T, um, IA over R times alpha A. From four I've solved for T, WB minus WB over G times A sub B, and we could pull out a WB, but that traps AB, at least for this algebra. We'll use that later, though. Uh, and then solve for alpha A, because I'm going to substitute that up here, and so I'll end up with a one equation in A sub B. So let's do a couple of those steps. Okay, equating the uh, T's. Got the IA over R, uh, bringing down the uh, definition for uh, uh, alpha A is AB over R here. So we end up with an IA over R squared uh, term times AB. We've got an AB term over here that we can bring to the left. So uh, after a little bit more algebra, we get AB times these two terms. And if, uh, remember, I is uh, mass moment of inertia, mass uh, length squared. So divided by that would give you a mass. So that's a mass term. It's clearly WB over G is a mass term. So everything seems to be OK. Mass times acceleration is a weight. So let's solve for a sub b on the next page. Okay, now you, with, with this kind of a hoist, this sort of a releasing kind of thing, you've got this equation. You don't have to do anything other than just use it. Uh, the weight of the uh, block b in pounds, the i in slug foot squared. Oh, we'll talk about that in a second, what was given in the MERM. Uh, r in feet, uh, again. So all of those are, are there. If you're given it in SI, uh, then you're probably given the mass. So this is just MB times G. They gave you MB. Multiply by G and get yourself Newtons there for that. Uh, and this is just, uh, you would just be given uh, this is MB. Okay, so all of that, and once you've calculated a sub b, uh, the acceleration of block b, then that's r alpha a. So solve for uh, alpha a uh, by just doing that divided by r. So you just would have done there. Okay, if they ask for the tensions, then you'd have the following uh, either two equations. Let's do both of those. So again, using either of the two, you could use this one looks shorter, but uh, IA over R squared times AB that you've just found. But actually, the second one, the one that we didn't want to use earlier because it's kind of trapped A sub B, once you cal calculate A sub B divided by G, whether it's 32.2 or 9.8, um, 
subtract that from 1, multiply by the WB that you're getting and uh, you, you're given, and there you are. So uh, this solves all of those problems, and so um, um, don't have to do any more of this. Okay, you're done for our for um, for all time t, as they say. Now let's look at what the MERM had in terms of its numbers and see if we get the same answers. Okay, well the MERM example both has both sets of units and we'll do both of those. In the US system, given uh, I sub A is 70 pound mass feet squared, well we know uh, we don't want, we need slugs there, so we're going to divide by 32.2. You're given the diameter is 2 feet, so the radius is 1 foot. You're given the weight of the block B is 10 pound mass. No, that's just equal to just 10 pound. Uh, this if you divide by the 32.2, uh, let me do that uh, separately and save YouTube time. So since uh, there are 32.2 um, pound masses uh, per, um, per slug, just divide by 32.2 uh, and get um, 2.174 uh, slug foot squared. So let's just, we just do that. Um, and I guess what we really got is 32.2, sorry, it's part of all that, uh, pound mass per slug. Okay. 32.2 pound mass per slug. So we got slug foot squared. That's what you want I in. Well, now let's take that information and put it into our acceleration of B equation. Okay, taking the equation we had for A sub B and put in uh, 10 pounds in the numerator, our 2.174 slug foot squared divided by 1 foot squared, the 10 pounds again by 32.2. Uh, all of these, both of these are slug terms, and you get. Uh, uh, at least the two decimal places, 2.48 slug, divide that into 10 pounds and get uh, 4.025 uh, feet per second squared, which is what the MERM got. Of course, that's equal to um, R alpha A, and so uh, that simply gives us alpha A divided by one foot gives us 4.025. 025 radians per second squared, which is exactly, again, what was in the uh, MERM. But what about tension? Okay, again, didn't they didn't find the tension, so we use our equation WB, 1 minus AB over G, put that in, uh, get 8.75 pounds, because all of this is non-dimensional, less than 10 pounds, which is great. Uh, what happens is, is the weight's 10 minus, so that uh, 10 minus 8.75 is the net force downward. Okay. Also has the solution for SI, but that works out just fine. We don't have a units problem there. Get the exact same answers. Okay, so you've got an equation for A sub B, and away you go. Okay, as well as T and your alpha. All set for any problem. Again, I invite you to visit my website as part of your exam preparations.